Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Vietnam Innovators. I'm your host, Hao. Uh, thank you for tuning in every single week and supporting the show. Without you, the show would not be possible. Uh, today's guest is here, based here in Ho Chi Minh City as well. Her name is Lynn. She is the director of the ICS Center. ICS Center does a lot of good work about making sure that this community is inclusive and participates part of society. Uh, but I'll let Lynn explain more about what ICS really does. Lynn, before we start with the rapid fire questions, mm -hmm. um, we'd love to hear just a little bit about you and then we'll get into it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, um, as you, my name is Lynn and I have been with ICS since 2015. Really, I'm the director of ICS Center and um, well, we work, um, as you know, uh, focusedly on the rise of LGBTI here in Vietnam. So our um, goal is, uh, well, in the hopefully in the future, to have a Vietnamese society that are inclusive and uh, the rise of uh, LGBT are protected by law and also uh, supported by their families and other allies in the society. Okay, great. Yeah, I I came to Vietnam in 2016, mm. so probably around the same time that ICS started, and I can say myself that in this community in Vietnam with LGBT, things have progressed a huge amount. Uh, it's taken time, of course, but it's very different from when I arrived. So uh, a lot of good work has been done in the past. Um, Lynn, let's get started with the rapid fire questions. Um, keep your answers short. These are designed to be on uh, short form video. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, first question for you is what excites you about Vietnam today? Well, I would immediately say it's about well food like Vietnamese food is like nothing to uh, well nothing can compare to besides that I think the uh, Vietnamese society especially when it comes to LGBT rights are very special uh, second question if you had to describe quickly what you do at ICS Center how would you do it I would say I have done almost everything. So I started in ICS as an assistant like a long time ago, and now I'm the director. You could uh, easily imagine that I have done everything from like small details, from paperwork to uh, until now, like running the whole uh, organizations. Amazing. That's inspiring for hopefully a lot of your young audience here today. Uh, what are the changes ICS Center hopes to make in Vietnam? So we we hope to create a society, a Vietnamese society, where um, the LGBTI uh, community are recognized um, and um, like supported by the families and allies, and also protected by laws. Um, and doing well to achieve that, we one of our um, like most important approach is to empower the community to do it themselves. What's a recent milestone at ICS Center that you'd like to share? Right after COVID, we were able to organize um, a quite special event, the Yoga Asia Conference, which is the first LGBTI regional conference um, in Vietnam and with a lot of participants from around the world to, to witness and to discuss LGBTI rights publicly uh, here in Vietnam. So I think it's a very special milestone. What's unique about the movement here in Vietnam for LGBT? The harmony. I think it's a, a very special things and uh, values that we usually um, consider when we create messages toward the campaign that we are doing. Yeah. The second to last question is, What's some career advice you'd like to give to someone considering a career in the nonprofit sector? First, you have to love it. Uh, to for a nonprofit uh, sector, uh, it's not about money, obviously, but there's a lot of challenges, and there will be times that you think you are you want to give up. But the only thing that will keep you going is because you love it, because you want to make the change and you believe in it. Uh, and the last question, um, uh, on a Sunday at 10 a.m., mm -hmm. uh, where would you be and what would you be doing? Uh, well, mm, recently uh, I will be at a coffee shop and, um, well, reading books with um, a friend or with my partner. Yeah. Okay. Very Saigonese. So Lynn, we've invited you uh, to the podcast today to talk about this very important topic. And today, of course, is 
uh, and this whole podcast collaboration we're doing with the Netherlands Embassy mm -hmm. is in celebration of the 50 years anniversary of Netherlands in Vietnam. And one of the pillars of that relationship is equality. So um, we're working with you today here on the podcast uh, to hear more about what you feel like equality stands for in Vietnam and, th and to understand more about this important topic. So maybe first you can introduce yourself and explain why this is so important to you personally. So first, um, can, I'm uh, Lin the director. I'm currently the director of ICS Center. Uh, I have been working in this field, this field for, uh, well, the very beginning of my career, like right after I graduated from university. So uh, that also leads to uh, the next question about like why it matters to me. Well, I think it, it go back a long time ago when, well, I was still very young. I was starting, I started to read uh, books um, and one of uh, very special books about like real story of women in, um, in this specific country uh, where they are not treated equally as other. Mm. And just like that child just felt like there's something wrong with the world. And I want to change that. But I was just a child back then. Uh, I have no idea how to do that. I couldn't see like uh, any role map there. And when this opportunity came mm -hmm. uh, with ICS work, I volunteered for ICS at the beginning and then was offered a position. And I just felt that, okay, this is, this is it. This is the change, the opportunity that I could make the change I wanted a long time ago. Let's talk about that roadmap yeah. a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, back then, mm. in the 90s, I assume, mm. and early 2000s, um, that roadmap was not clear. Mm. Maybe because society had not accepted mm. women or mm. LGBT as mm. much, perhaps, um, or just minority groups, let's mm. say. Today, that roadmap feels a bit different. Mm. Would you, would you say the same? Is that roadmap there for younger people mm -hmm. uh, to better understand uh, acceptance and equality, mm -hmm. um, especially for students today? Perhaps they're just wrapping up their studies and mm -hmm. um, they're wondering, what's that career future for me as, let's say, a woman in Vietnam, yeah. for example? Yeah, I would say it's, um, it's a totally different scenario now. Mm -hmm. Like uh, back then, um, like internet was just quite new and not, that accessible to everyone um, so now I could see that uh, younger generation especially even with our volunteers and staff younger staff uh, they have access to all kind of information and opportunity mm. in terms of like learning studying more or like do choosing to do what they want what change they want to make so there is a lot more differently um, a lot more opportunity and different scenario and okay. increase accessibility to either information or actual opportunity for okay. young people yeah very good and for our listeners who may not be familiar with the lgbt movement mm -hmm. uh in general in vietnam could you define what that movement is like what individuals are involved uh, in terms of um, advocating for, mm. uh, but also what are some significant moments mm. and highlights that you can share, mm. at least during the time that you've been working at ICS? So the movement, I would say, is started with the very beginning of uh, ICS in 2008. Yeah, we started that early. Like, I wasn't there, but uh, I know the story. Okay. Um, so ICS started as a volunteer group, as one of the very first project of another NGO that to the goal of the, of the project is to build um, a group uh, working for LGBTI rights. Everyone joined as volunteer, uh, joining capacity building activities. Mm -hmm. um, well, have initiate like implement their own initiative and ideas, um, and then we became like that group of like very first uh, pioneer. Now mostly. Uh, we would say retired now. So they were um, leading the the movement at a very difficult time. You could probably imagine like more than 10 years ago, mm -hmm. you couldn't even read any positive article about LGBT on uh, the internet, on newspaper. In Vietnamese language. Yeah, in yeah. Vietnamese language. Most of the news, anything you could see, like the, uh, the way that the uh, media or the public 
picture of BioGBTI community was just like criminals in general, like really, really bad people. Mm. So it changed, and they, well, but the the very like founders of ISIS um, started a movement uh, in that scenario. So the the founders of ICS mm. were an older generation. Yeah. it sounds like, and mm. today your director, and you graduated university not even 10 years ago, it sounds mm. like. No. So it's a, it's a new, fresh leadership, a bit younger. Mm. The movement is younger, mm. it sounds like. And you mentioned a lot of your staff are a young, younger yeah, as well. Yeah, Gen Z too. Okay, yeah. interesting. Well, that gives a lot of fresh direction to what to expect, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about uh, different types of equality or LGBT participation. Mm. Um, and I want to focus on the workplace what does that workplace participation look like mm-hmm. today? Um, especially this, you know, this, the ideas of pride in the workplace, uh, being open about it and having uh, open discussions about it. Um, what are your thoughts on the current state of that mm-hmm. here in Vietnam? So, uh, well, going back a little, like a big, for a bigger picture, one of our partners, um, a research institute, have done two quite big um, research on discrimination against LGBT in Vietnam. Uh, one was done in 2015, and they have just updated it and, uh, in, um, 2000 in uh, finished in 2022, just last year. So all of the m- numbers uh, show that um, uh, school families and workplace are the three environment that the LGBTI community experienced discrimination the most mm-hmm. in Vietnam. Mm. So that's also aligned with three of our um, uh, very big uh, program working mm-hmm. on focusing on those three uh, environment okay. and the workplace are uh, like uh, you mentioned a very important one. You could imagine that like the lives of a person growing up like being being born and growing up in your family being discriminated and then going to school, being discriminated, and then going to the workplace when you already an adult, also experience discriminated. So such lives are, are very common and popular to the LGBTI community. So leading to the importance of creating better environment, uh, not just the community uh, ourselves couldn't do that alone. Mm. We need support from allies. When it comes to the workplace, it the corporation is our colleague, is our supervisor. All of the the effort, it it needs to be a child effort in order to actually make those environment are uh, really inclusive and safe for not just LGBT but also other marginalized group. I, I've noticed this as well in mm. Vietnam, at least. A lot of companies that embrace pride in the Mm -hmm. workplace are typically international companies. Mm -hmm. And let me explain a little bit why, from what I see. Mm -hmm. Uh, A lot of big international companies, they're headquartered in places like Europe and Australia, Mm -hmm. perhaps in America, and they have these global mandates for diversity in the workplace. And so obviously all the offices around the world, including Mm -hmm. here in Vietnam, have the same uh, participation in that idea, that movement, pride in the workplace. Now in Vietnam, if we go more specific, do you see Vietnamese companies having that same trend of adoption of pride in the workplace? Why and when? why not? And mm. I'd love to hear your thoughts about that. Yeah. Well, I would like to debate a little about sure. yeah. um, your ideas on the, um, let's say, international mm. um, company. Even international company uh, working in Vietnam with the majority are, uh, of employees are Vietnamese people. Mm-hmm. Uh, even they have challenges when implementing uh, their own international uh, policies or like inclusiveness mm-hmm. in Vietnam. To be able to localize or implement uh, the policy or practices um, in that they have used in other countries, especially Western country, into Vietnamese or I believe also other Asian uh, country contexts are very difficult for it, it to actually make a change, be impactful to the community here. Mm. Well, we have been working and supporting and hearing stories from companies where they really, really want to do that want to use um, the international policy, uh, want to make it a better environment for LGBTI employees, but they have experienced challenges. Mm-hmm. For example, uh, some have um, like uh, benefits uh, that 
provide equal uh, equal benefits for same sex couples uh, to uh, other heterosexual marriage couple in Vietnam. Why Vietnam haven't um, recognized marriage between same sex people, but for like one or two year after implementing that adapting that policy into a uh, Vietnamese uh, branch, mm-hmm. they have no almost like no employee going to the HR to claim that benefits. Mm-hmm. Because I could easily assume that one of the reasons was that because like going to HR and telling the HR that you are an LGBTI or are in a same sex relationship is scary mm-hmm. to to a lot of Vietnamese LGBT and just that alone like in a, you can imagine in a big company like thousands of employees you might not even know like really talk to the HR person mm-hmm. before mm-hmm. but you have to go up there and tell them okay I'm a lesbian I'm a gay person I'm in a, a same-sex relationship is why I I have experienced discrimination throughout my whole life like in family in school that like I mentioned to you I couldn't do that. I wouldn't be able to do that, even though the company is really open and and want to create a, a safer place. There's a lot of challenge. Right, right. Um, so it's not just about like, let's say you know companies can say that they have pride in the workplace, mm. but the actual um, success and implementation mm. and for people to feel comfortable enough mm. to do that. There's it's not even the companies kind of I guess you could say they need allies themselves mm. to actually make that change happen. Mm. They can yeah. say it, mm-hmm. but then how does it actually get done? Right? Yeah, so, and yeah, well, right? and yeah, it's not simple. Okay, not at all. Well, yeah, which goes to my next point, which is about what challenges do you continue to see uh, happening in Vietnam? Uh, I mean, you mentioned one, like we can say all these things, but how do we actually make it happen? Uh, please, I would love to hear from you about what those challenges are exactly. Well, that's one of them, but mm. love to love to hear what other challenges we should be aware about so i would say usually we will divide it into um two different but also very connected part is the challenge on um well society acceptance and the second is on the legal protections well in the last 10 years there were a lot of change uh, quite dramatic change but in the real world according to research and number uh, discrimination is still happening. We usually say it's happening behind closed doors. And these are where uh, it's quite difficult to solve. We need to have a different program. We need to talk to the groups like families of LGBTI people have different uh, misunderstandings, different issues. In school, teachers have um, different way of seeing um, like the issues or understanding the issue of LGBTI uh, students. Similar to that in the workplace, uh, like I also mentioned previously, there are a lot of challenges. It's not just you have a good policy or you you put on um, a rainbow flag for a month, then then everything will be solved. It's not exactly. like that. Right, yeah, right. there's a lot of uh, effort need to be made, and it's not a thing that you could do for like one or two years. Uh, and immediately see the change in the whole environment. It's not like that. And the second thing is about legal recognitions uh, and protection for the LGBTI community here. You could see that um, I think two of a very big milestone mm-hmm. when it comes to uh, the movement here is um, when we um, our marriage and family law uh, removed the ban on uh, same-sex marriage in 2014. It was a big change. I think um, kind of make a lot of headlines that mm-hmm. time in 2014. But actually, there is no really no protection for uh, same-sex couples. So the, the ban was removed, but there is no actual protections. So in, in real life, uh, we still have no uh, rights for as a marriage, uh, in marriage, like heterosexual couples. So it's still not an equal recognitions. The second milestone um, you might have heard of in 2015 about um, our civil court amendment where uh, for the first time um, the transgender community are recognized in in our civil court in the law. Uh, But in able to implement 
that right. We need to wait for another law to be created. And it has been, well, until now is eight years. And we haven't had that law yet. The transgender community is still waiting for that law to be like using their right. Well, generally, I think there are positive changes, but there has not been any concrete or sustainable change. Anything that the community, our, like the LGBTI community, could actually use in their real life. There's one specific note here in my in in my uh, my notes here about the Vietnam Corporate Pride Network. Um, I've seen it posted on LinkedIn before uh, on some media, and specifically by KPMG Vietnam and some diplomatic missions in, in Vietnam as well, including the Netherlands. Um, could you elaborate on the purpose of this network and mm -hmm. who's involved, what you're trying to achieve? Because you have ICS already, yeah. mm -hmm. but um, this one's very focused on the corporate world. Yes. So maybe you can touch upon that as well. Well, I say one of our main program is working with the corporate sector uh, and uh, VCPN, the Vietnam Corporate Pride Network, is uh, one of the main activities of um, initiative of, of this program. And it was created, first launched in 2021. Uh, it was a joint effort of ISIS, KBG, and other consulates. Mm -hmm. Well, before that, we have been talking like years uh, since uh, ICN and KBMG has been working together for years about um, such uh, network. So we have been, for ICS, we have been doing like training, working and like understanding the needs and the issues in the workplace, trying to understand it and trying to um, like listen to what are the challenges and what are the needs of our partners in the corporate work. And how many people are in this network now? About the list of member, about 50 uh, companies. Five zero? Yeah, five and zero. how do they participate? Is there some sort of program mm -hmm. that they join on an annual basis? I, I, I ask mm -hmm. these because I'm sure some people might be interested. Yeah, so at the beginning, um, any participants who wish to be a member um, could uh, either try one of uh, one or two of our um, events mm -hmm. and requester okay. if they're interested in. Uh, clearly, we are developing tools and process uh, like tools that could gather uh, some like very basic uh, data of our uh, members in order to to make sure that okay, so we understand what are the context of our member regarding the LGBTI inclusiveness uh, at the very beginning. So it's. VCPN is still like uh, in, in the process of growing and there's a lot of activities and a lot of initiative that we wanted to do uh, with and for our members. And um, so, well, in short, now you could just simply try one of our events, request your, your company's information mm -hmm. and we will send, um, and in the future, uh, we will send more tools and update and survey that we hope to have and to have the support and participants of um, the members. Yeah. Okay. Talking about, we've spoken a lot about the mm -hmm. corporates and how they can get involved and some may get involved for the wrong reasons, mm -hmm. you could say. Uh, I, I don't think anyone has a negative intention mm -hmm. necessarily, but sometimes they might not be doing it for a genuine mm -hmm. uh, reason. Uh, so the, the topic becomes rainbow washing. Uh, we have that term being used quite a lot, like green washing and, and all these kind of things. What are your thoughts about that uh, possible issue coming up? Yeah, I think that's, uh, yeah, rainbow washing is uh, the issue for not just in Vietnam, but it has been, it has been a growing issue for uh, many other countries, especially where the LGBT movement are more advanced. So in short, um, quick explanation is rainbow washing is, is when someone or some organization uh, use um, like saying or use the rainbow flag or uh, saying that they want to support the LGBTI community showing that but either to have like kind other like bad thing they do mm -hmm. or to just like fully take advantage of the community uh, without recognizing and uh, tackling the uh, the real issue that the LGBTI community are facing. Well, there could be a lot of examples. Like, uh, I think it's 
I agree with you is not uh, I don't think anyone actually want to do create anything negative or or have bad intention but it's just because they they, they do the, they didn't understand um the corporate or even with individual uh, sometimes people just think like uh, putting up a rainbow flag in a specific month is enough especially with June like Prime Month International Prime Month where the corporate knows a lot about but not a lot of corporate knows about um, the local community like for example like September is um, where most of the um, pride happening here and now I believe now a lot of more corporate knows mm. um thanks to your your uh, podcast too amazing uh, <laughs> hopefully we can go from yeah. 50 to 100 yeah is that ambitious <laughs> yeah well i hope we will i will keep you updated with that we're not a corporate vietcetra is not a corporate but can we join still is that possible i think so i well i will <laughs> it I should be corporate so. companies mm -hmm. not corporates yeah <laughs> we believe that the corporate have a lot of resources and the power to make change mm. just like putting uh, a little more effort like um, getting to know the community what are we facing what are we trying to solve and put your resources into that to to help us to solve that faster piloting more things uh, doing a little more research or actually uh, tackle like even with like putting like how you should put the rainbow flag where you should put it how you should like putting it with like what kind of ca caption you should say even those small things could make a change if you do it right mm. it's easier said than done but we are here to help not just ICS but there are also other LGBTI activists and organizations that are willing to help uh, you just need to ask before any campaign or any activities that you want to put the rainbow flag on mm -hmm. ask as the community mm. as the activists as people who uh, have been working with the LGBT community themselves. We're going to move to the last part of today's mm. podcast, which is about the solutions mm. and what the future outlook can be uh, for this community. Um, we talked a lot about international perspectives. Uh, you mentioned you and your team have done research mm. and, and invited partners from abroad, for example, and uh, Vietnam is unique in its own way in, in addressing this as well. Could you elaborate how you guys draw on insights from countries like the Netherlands, for mm. example, which is making today's podcast possible to help inform your efforts mm. here in Vietnam? What have been some interesting case studies, perhaps? On top of my mind now is uh, because just last month I participated um, the uh, Amsterdam Pride in, okay. in the Netherlands. Mm. And while participating in it, it was one of the quite like rare occasion that I could be like the participant instead of the organizer. So um, I could see uh, two, uh, two things that I think would like mean a lot as to any LGBTI person. Like first is I saw a lot of uh, support from the, the groups, the type of people that I think we have been longing support from for a very long time. When I was on the the boat, the Paris boat okay. of MZM Pride, mm -hmm. so I look onto the sidewalk um, with a lot a lot of people are standing on the boat of the sidewalk, and um, um, at that specific time, I saw a group of old people, mm -hmm. like people who who are like our like grandpas and okay. grandmas. Um, I I uh, I think someone told me that um, that area of the city are where like old people are living. Sure. Um, so, uh, and I saw them like going on the street and waving flags, and I think that's one of the thing we. Uh, yeah. Well, we as LGBTI community really really want from our families. Mm. Like it's, it's a missing basically. Yeah. Okay. Is there, sorry, the side question, you mentioned like, uh, of course, ICS today is managed mostly mm. by younger people. Mm. It used to be managed by a bit older people. Mm. And then when you went to the Netherlands, you saw people of all age groups are represented. Yeah. Mm. Are the older generations represented publicly mm. in this LGBT movement, would you say? Uh, today here in Vietnam in Vietnam I think uh, to not, yeah I've seen a few like activities mm -hmm. that 
um, like gather and some create some like small discussion, internal okay. discussion for like versus like uh, LGBT people who are like in older generation. Like in in their lifetime, there is no acceptance of LGBTI at all when they were young. And they have a very different experience than us, uh, even than you or me. Mm -hmm. And the second thing I think uh, all, all the generation representative here is when it comes to the families, like the parents of the current uh, LGBT, for example, my parents or uh, like other like Gen Z staff uh, parents, uh, volunteers uh, parents. So there, uh, we have a group of parents of LGBTI people. We cr we've created in back way back in 2012. Now they have a quite big group, like about 100 members. Not big and, enough. Well, yeah, obviously not big enough, and uh, we want to have more. So I think these are the two representation of older generation, whether the older generation within the LGBT community or the supporter, which plays a very important role when it comes to like family family support in. I think their their role are very special in the even uh, both in the advocacy work or in and especially in the eyes of the Vietnamese society. Yeah, I want to go back to your visit to mm. Amsterdam mm. Uh, recently, where you, and you mentioned the older generation mm. is represented. Do you have any other takeaways that you'd like to share from that particular experience that perhaps can give perspective to our audience today? Amsterdam is, um, well, we all know, a very open uh, city to all of the, the groups, not just only LGBT. Mm -hmm. But I could clearly see a lot of uh, recognitions and visibility of LGBT there. For example, I, I've been to the, uh, which is called the Pink Point, where they have kind of like a memorial uh, place to, memo to memorize the um, like the experience that the LGBTI people have been through in terms of discrimination, including uh, uh, homicide and um, and other like um, things that you would never want uh, yourself or your family need to have to been through. Right. So, um, so they have that. Like they recognize that um, they have there has been bad thing happen mm. and. So from that, they will know that, like, always been reminded not to do that again. Okay. Yeah. So like violence, yeah. for mm -hmm. example, discrimination mm -hmm. of the more extreme types, mm -hmm. potentially, and, and making sure that generations are educated and yeah. aware of those mm -hmm. kind of things. Okay, yeah, I can, I can see that. Very good. My last question, and then we'll be closing here today, mm -hmm. the podcast, uh, to Lynn, and thank you for sharing these insights so far. Um, I'm not too familiar with the LGBT communities, uh, activism mm -hmm. and, and work in Vietnam. So it's been very interesting for me. I, I want to go back to our original uh, part one, which mm -hmm. was about the workplace and, mm -hmm. and how it compares to uh, here versus international kind of um, environments. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any takeaways in regards to that uh, that you've noticed and from when you went to the Netherlands, for example? Well, I would say the obviously the, the story of um, the two countries that is very different in, in the progress we made or the, I would say the movement, LGBTI movement here is, uh, in Vietnam is very, still very young. Mm -hmm. Other countries are, have like, they spend many decades to advocate for this specific uh, topic, like this specific community. But in Vietnam, we just started like, uh, well, a little more than like 12, 13 years ago. And we've, yes, we have made a lot of progress though. I think one of the the value that an approach that I really appreciate when working with organization from Netherlands was that they they're not like for example if we at a home and we we can imagine that we have all the rights and life is so good usually we we might forget like what is happening out there mm. like there are still people facing discrimination every day but Organize, usually organization from Netherlands is not like that. They, they see that if the, uh, the homework is not as equal, it will eventually affect them. Mm. That, so that's why they're not like coming here and like giving money only, but they, they want to actually make sure that everyone's have the equal rights. And by that, 
it will also make sure that um, the movement, the achievement that they make in their own country are also sustained. Yeah. Okay. So it's like it's not about the uh, the story of like one specific country or uh, one specific city or a person or community. It's like the whole world. Yeah. And guys, keep in mind, September is Pride Month here in Vietnam, but it's not just this month. It's it's all year round, right? This is the time to be participating in this movement. Um, Jilin, over at ICS Center, what should our audience know about in terms of upcoming participation either this month or the next few months ahead in mm. 2023? Yeah, as you already mentioned, uh, thank you for uh, uh, reminding everyone about September is, a pride, uh, is our uh, local Pride Month. Mm. Well, I have to tell a lot of our partners, like repeating again and again, like this is our Pride Month, and um, you will see a lot of community activities around this time. Uh, so for ICS, uh, we will be um, coordinating the effort uh, toward Pride in um, in Ho Chi Minh City, but we also have a lot of partners who are organizing Pride around um, the the. Uh, around the country, okay. including mm-hmm. Hanoi Pride, uh, which is organized by um, Hanoi Pride Working Group in other provinces. I think the interesting thing about Pride here is um, like you could see if you have time to have experience and go to different provinces, you will see a very, all very unique uh, Pride uh, and it all localized. It's totally different everywhere and organized by different people uh, tackle like different needs of each local community uh, is a very like diverse picture so if you have time not only just pay attention to um, Pride in Ho Chi Minh City in Hanoi which are the biggest but also spend some time going to other provinces and see how lives are for uh, the community there okay very good um, that's something I didn't know uh, that all around the country, there's a different community and uh, kind of culture of mm. LGBT. Uh, so uh, anyways, if you're part of those communities all around the country, we'd love to hear from you. Get, get, get involved. It's Pride Month, September, but it should be Pride Month all the time mm. uh, so that LGBT's movement is recognized and aware in Vietnam. Uh, for our listeners today who are tuning in, um, if you'd like to participate more in this program, uh, and this movement, um, be an assistant at ICS. <laughs> maybe, maybe Lynn is hiring. I'm not sure, yeah. but uh, volunteers or, or, or otherwise, um, you can find ICS's information in the description below. Um, and if you're not looking for something new, but you are working in Vietnam, maybe you can do something at your own workplace as well. And uh, we encourage that um, here at Vietcetro as well. Do something. Get involved. Um, I'm sure Lynn. Uh, you're advocating that all day and the listeners uh, can take away something from today's podcast. Uh, Thank you so much, Jilin, for sharing those insights and uh, looking forward to seeing the progress happen over the next few years. Yeah, thank you. Thank you and see you guys next time. Mm